Jay here for Stretford Paddock and this is the Tier 1 Transfer Podcast. Joining me as always is my co-host Ronaldo Brown. How are you doing Ronaldo? I'm doing great, how are you? Yeah mate, you're looking happy. <laughs> it's excited. always good to see you, you're excited. Um, and we've got a special guest today, the man who can send the internet into a frenzy with those three magic words, here we go. I'm talking about, of course, Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to obviously get to the, the Jaden Sancho news a little bit later, but first of all, I wanted to ask you about Paul Pogba, because you tweeted recently that United want to extend his deal at the club, and I just wanted to know how keen do you feel that Mino Riola and Paul Pogba are to sign a new deal with Manchester United? I think there are good chances to see Paul Pogba to sign a new contract with, with Manchester United. I say good chances because everything has changed between Paul Pogba and Manchester United on last six, five months. Uh, I remember in January, in December, when I was speaking around Paul Pogba about to understand his situation, they were saying, OK, uh, it's possible next summer he's going to leave, he's going to Juventus or to Real Madrid, we are going to talk, because the feeling was that Paul was over for Manchester United, so he wanted to try a new chapter. And then something is changing, as I told you, because Manchester United found their way signing Bruno, going in the Champions League, uh, feeling Pogba. Now the feeling of Paul is okay, I am in a top, top club. We can be back to win also for the Premier League. And he has good feelings now. And something is changing also on the transfer market because of the virus. Obviously, we are saying it with Sancho, with many deals. It's not easy to find and to buy top players like Pogba on this transfer market. So the same for Juventus and for Real Madrid. They are not going to do some deals like Pogba or 100 million players. So uh, in, in this moment, it's so difficult to take Pogba out from Manchester United. And I think the feeling of the player is, OK, we can talk about the contract. We can on next week uh, start contacts with, with Mino Raiola. So I'm convinced from September, Manchester United will start to speak with, with Raiola. And we will see because it's never easy to find an economical agreement with Pogba and with Raiola in particular but for sure they will try and they have good feelings I say yes. Do you, do you think he's he's genuinely happy at Manchester United or is it a case that because as you've mentioned no one's spending big money and he might not be able to get the move that he's almost stuck here? I feel him happy I have to say yes I have to say yeah genuinely happy also because uh, as I told you uh, you know more than me that the situation has changed with Manchester United to see the club in the Champions League to see the club with top players like Bruno they, they signed on January so the feeling between Manchester United and Pogba is different in this moment and I feel yes it's not just about the market because no top clubs are going for him it's also because it feels okay I am in the club where I want to stay uh, and I think Manchester United will go with Pogba also next season and for many years. Right, moving on to a little bit of Sancho news, what have you made of Jalen Sancho's statement earlier today and do you think it affects United's pursuit for the player? This is a really crazy situation, guys. <laughs> you know more than me because it's a complicated, complicated situation. The situation is that Manchester United continue to think to Jadon Sancho as their main target for this transfer market. So I have to say what I'm told is that the deal is not over in this moment. Then the deal is difficult because if Manchester United want really to get Jadon Sancho, they have to pay 120 million euros to Borussia Dortmund. At the moment, the situation is complicated because the two clubs are, ha are having a not easy relationship now. Because as I told you, uh, Manchester United feel frustrated after the statement of Borussia Dortmund in the middle of negotiation. They don't want any deadline. They say, OK, we have two months to negotiate. Why we have to stop now? Uh, every top club is speaking about top players now during the summer or next month. Why we have to stop now? We want to talk. We want to try again. So the feeling of Manchester United is we want to go again with Jadon Sancho as priority target. Borussia Dortmund, I'm going to say, if you want him, you have to pay or the player will stay here. And I don't have the feeling that the player will strike with, with Borussia Dortmund. I have the feeling that it's possible he will speak with Borussia Dortmund. That is different because when a player goes to speak and wants to understand the situation, it's something different from strike with the club. And he, at the moment, is going to be a respectful guy for, for his club. So in this moment, Manchester United must show to Borussia Dortmund, OK, we want the player, we are ready to pay 120 million euros. But at the moment, they didn't make this kind of bid. So we will see what will happen in the next days. But I say again to you that Manchester United are still thinking to Jadon Sancho. How much of a stumbling block, as, or a stumbling block, so to speak, has his wages been, or is it just basically a disagreement between the fees? Yes, personal terms are um, another particular story because I have to say to be fair that Manchester United say, OK, we have not agreed yet personal terms with Sancho, but I am told and I say what I am told that the personal terms are absolutely OK with the player and they are ready to 
make his contract until uh, five years for next five years. So there is no problem from the player. The player wants to join Manchester United, and this will never be an issue. Also, because uh, Jadon Sancho wants to come back to the Premier League, wants to play the Champions League with Manchester United. So uh, in this moment, the personal terms are not a problem. It's normal that he also is now in a good club because Borussia Dortmund is a good club. They have good players, young players. They play the Champions League too. So he must not force to, to go out. But his convention is, I want to go to Manchester United. And I think personal terms are okay, are not a problem. Also because Manchester United is normal. They are thinking about the situation because they don't have the player now. And it's normal you say, okay, we don't have the total agreement. But what I'm told about who is working to the deal is that player is not a problem. Sancho wants to join Manchester United. The problem is to pay 120 million euro to Borussia Dortmund. Fabrizio, I know you sort of deal in facts rather than opinion, but would you be surprised if this deal didn't happen? No, 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 no. I would not be surprised because uh, in the transfer market, everything can happen. And in this summer, after the virus, when you ask 120 million euro for a player, I can understand if a top club as Manchester United, as many other top clubs, I told you about Juventus with Pogba, the same for Real Madrid, the same for many, many top clubs, it's impossible to go for top players and pay immediately 120 million euros. So I would not be surprised if Manchester United in two weeks or one week would say, okay, it's over, we go with another preview. Because it's part of the summer. But at the moment, about in my opinion, Manchester United will go again for Jordan Sancho. That's my opinion, because I feel them not saying... Uh, I was expecting after the, the sentence of, of Zork, of the director of Borussia Dortmund, I was expecting Manchester United to say, okay, you say this, it's over. Take the player, we go on another player, because... You have not been respectful with our idea of transfer and negotiation. And, and Manchester United had another behavior about this deal. They said, okay, we want still him. We go for him. We want to try again for him. And when you feel a top club doing something like this, it's because they want to try really again. They feel the player wants to join. And that's the situation for Sancho. So they will try again, but we have to be respectful also for Borussia Dortmund. And at the moment, they have been so clear. Or you have to pay or the players stay here. So I would not be surprised if General Sancho would stay at Borussia Dortmund for one year. Yes. You mentioned there about alternatives. One player that's been linked to United as an alternative to Jadon Sancho is Kingsley Coman. Is he still on the, on the radar? Do you think that's still a target for United if the Sancho deal doesn't happen? It's possible. He can be a name. It's not easy to because when you have to talk with German clubs, it's always difficult and they don't, don't care about the virus, about the, price, the prices of the players. They want their money and they, and they don't, don't want to negotiate. So it will be difficult too. Another name is, is Usman Dembele, for sure. Uh, it's another option on the list for, for Manchester United. But it's so difficult to say now, OK, there are other options because if you speak who, with who's working on the Jadon Sancho deal, they always say, we go with Jadon Sancho. We go with Jadon Sancho. So I think we have to wait a bit to understand who would be the other option, the backup option for Manchester United. Because at this moment, they have in the mind still Jadon Sancho and no more. But as I told you, I think Dembele and, and Coman are a possible backup options. Dembele is getting easier also because Barcelona is possible they're going to sell him. They need money. They need to sell players. So maybe it can be more easy than, than Coman, I think. We've also been hearing reports that Paul Torres could be on United's radar. How serious do you think that interest is? He's an opportunity. They are considering him, but it's nothing advanced at the moment. They are considering him. They have obviously a list on the transfer market, so they, they, they take info, they speak with the agents, and that's the situation of Paul Torres. But at the moment, I would say nothing absolutely advanced. We have to wait a bit because uh, when a top club goes on a top layer, as we are speaking about Jadon Sancho, they focus like totally on this player and on this deal. Then they consider if they have backup options, absolutely yes. But in this moment, Manchester United are still concentrated just on this deal. So I think we have to wait a bit. And the same for Gabriel from, from Lille. Many are speaking about him, but I think they need to wait a bit. What do you think is still happening with Grealish? Is he still a target for United or is that pretty much over and done He's with? So appreciated. He's so appreciated, as, as you know, from, from Manchester United, they like the player, they like his mentality, they like his leadership. So he has considered a Manchester United player for his mentality. But at the moment, he's not the, the, the priority. He's not a priority for the club. So we can consider him in the list, as I told you, for, for Dembele and for Eric players. They are considering him and his situation. And for sure, in his mind, he would love to join Manchester United. But in this moment, there are not advanced talks to, to sign him. So we, we must keep an eye on, on Grealish for sure, because... He had a good season. He's a leader, and Manchester United like this kind of player, as they did with Bruno, who was the sporting, was Bruno Fernandes, and they took him, and he's a fantastic player. I think they are considering Grealish, but at the moment, he's not an advanced at all. Fabrizio, is there 
one target or a name that's out there perhaps that hasn't been reported as much that you, you think United are interested in? Um, you, you mean a new name, yes. for example? <laughs> no, at the moment, no. At the moment, no. I have to be honest with you. When you speak with Manchester United now about transfer market, they just say, Jadon Sancho. But this, the situation from many weeks, so I have to be, to be honest. I don't want to, to sell dreams to the, to the fans because in this moment, they want to try again. They want to try again. And I think it's normal because um, I think we have to understand that transfer market has changed it and in this summer. And it was also difficult to get players one year ago. Do you remember with Bruno, they need six months to get the players. So it was not easy one year ago. Imagine now that they had terrible situation, economical situation with the top clubs in particular, also Manchester United. So when you, got, when you want to get a top player, you need time. You need time, you need, you need to negotiate. So uh, I think we are in the poker game, as in German they say, and we are still in. So we have to wait to understand what will happen with Sancho. But I think Manchester United will not stop with Sancho. They will go for a centre-back on this summer. So we need to wait a bit to understand what will happen with Sancho. And then we will see also for the other targets for the club. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about sort of traditionally how transfer deals work because there's been a bit of confusion recently. There's been reports that there's intermediaries working with between Dortmund and, and Manchester United. There's different agents involved. Is that normal? Is that how it happens? Would it be the club speaks to the club or do they let the agents just get on with it and make the deal happen? It's absolutely normal. It's absolutely normal, I think. And when you see them, but not just with, with Premier League clubs or Bundesliga clubs, also here in Italy, for example, or in Spain, they also use uh, intermediary or, or agents to, to speak between the two clubs. It's normal. I think it's, it's understandable that some clubs can say, okay, we want to speak, to speak directly, we want to find the agreement directly between the two clubs, but many clubs using, are, using, are using agents, so it's, it's nothing new and I think it's something respectful. It's not the problem. I think this is not a problem. This, this is frustrating because you can lose a bit of time. It's something different than when one club speaks speak directly to another club. So you can lose time. You have to pay this agent. So you have many things to, to understand when you have an agent in the, in the middle of the deal. But it's nothing new and it's something normal in the transfer market. So it's part of, the, of, this, of this game and it's part of this difficult deal because it's a really difficult deal. I think Manchester United were expecting to say, OK, uh, we need to wait a bit. We need to wait August and Borussia Dortmund will, will, also, will ask a, a lower fee because they were thinking about the virus. They were thinking about the replacement for, for Borussia Dortmund. So they were expecting something like this. But German clubs are like this. They want money. They want 120 million euro and they're going to ask 120 million euro. Fabrizio, what's the last few um, years pretty much been like for you? Do you remember your first breaking news, here we go, post? <laughs> um, I don't remember the here we go, the first one of here we go, because as I always say, the here we go has started uh, like casual. I never did okay. I want. I know. Was thinking I want to do a, to do a brand or something like this. Never. I, it was like just playing with the fans on on Twitter. One time I said here we go, and everyone said oh say again when we have a deal. So it was not it was not planned. And I remember the first my my first important news here in Italy was about Mauro Cardi when he was playing for Sampdoria here in Italy and then Inter signed him. And no one, no one was expecting this news because everyone was speaking about Napoli and something like this. I was a friend, friend of the agent of Mauro Riccardi since I started in Barcelona. He was in La Masia with Barcelona young team. And I became friend with him and he told me, okay, Mauro is going to Inter. We had an agreement, we found total agreement. And I remember I was buzzing because it was a big news here in Italy. You know, Inter is one of the most important clubs here. So I started with, with Italian news. And then I, I understood that transfer market, dreams in the transfer market are for everyone, not just in Italy or in England. Or You have to give news about the, the, the clubs of all over the world if you, if you can. And that's my, my mentality. I love to do this job because I, I love to see people dreaming with the transfer news. Yeah, we've all seen that like, you've recently hit 1 million followers on Twitter. Do you ever get surprised on how many people actually hang on to every word that you said? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. It's really surprising, yes. And I've never expected that like one year, two years ago, really. And it's beautiful because my idea is like, okay, when, I, when I'm working, you know, transfer market is crazy. So you have to work like all day. You can say, okay, I take two hours for myself. I don't do anything. I don't look at the phone. It's impossible. If you do something like this, imagine I go out for two hours. I don't look at the phone and Sancho, here we go. And Manchester United fan kill me. So I can't, <laughs> I feel, I feel like this. And I, and I like this because it's, it's like I'm playing a match every day and I have to score every day. And I like this feeling. I don't know. I, I understand when my friends say you are crazy, you are, you are doing a crazy work, why you do like this, enjoy something, I, I like this. 
I like this, I feel this, and and I love when you say one million followers is something big for me because I feel people love what I do, and for me, it's the most beautiful news. It's the most beautiful here we go because really, I, I work for the fans. I work for the fans and for 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 their happiness. I say because uh, if I didn't have Twitter or Instagram or social media where I share this, okay, just writing on a paper or selling on TV. And on TV would be not the same thing. I want the people to feel the people happy, and it's not a different. I mean, for me, it sort of leads me on to my next question. You always seem to be awake. You know, when we've chatted at sort of, you've messaged <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning. You're always replying to people on Twitter. I saw someone tweeting you the other day asking you when their fridge refrigerator is going to be fixed, and you replied to it. I just, how do you find all the time? Is there enough hours in the day? <laughs> I I don't like to sleep, so so I sleep like six hour a night. Uh, from six, from five until 11, 10, 11, five or six hours, no more. Because transfer market during the night is, is always having updates. You know, it's crazy. This is a crazy world. So you have more updates during the night than during the morning because agents, directors, they always sleep during the morning and they work during the night. They have meetings, they have dinners, and they go during the night having dinners, having contacts. So I prefer to stay awake during the night and going going sleeping late and I try to answer always to the people also if it's night also if it's afternoon always because I feel people get, get it's something different when you answer directly to people if you tweet some news okay it's your news they, they feel this but if you can also answer sometimes it's possible to answer everyone you know I mean, like all day just answering but I feel sometimes they need to, to have answers and I try to, to give them yeah you do, you do, and I think a lot of people appreciate that about you. Um, when it comes to the Premier League clubs, we've seen the likes of Manchester City, we've seen Chelsea already making some big signings. Which of the sort of top Premier League clubs do you think is going to have the busiest transfer window? I think yes. I think yes. I mean, I think we need to wait until the, the end of the Europa League and also the Champions League, and then we will have a busy transfer market. Absolutely, yes, a busy transfer window. Also, because we are speaking about Manchester City already signed two players, good players like Ferran Torres and Ake, and the same for Chelsea that are going for, for Kai Havertz. So I think it will be a busy transfer market, yes. And Sancho deal will be one of the stories. Also, if they didn't get him, but if they will try again, as I told you. So I think we will speak about him also for, for some weeks more. And... Yes, I think Premier League will be always the, the, main, the main for the transfer market because in La Liga, I think Real Madrid will not sign players, as they said yesterday. Um, and the same for Barcelona. They don't have an easy situation. They were trying to sign Lautaro. Sancho deal remembers me of the Lautaro deal because also Lautaro Martinez for Barcelona was similar like a done deal. Everyone in Barcelona were convinced to sign him and Inter said, OK, you have to pay 111, in this case, million euro. The same for Sancho with Borussia Dortmund and they didn't find an agreement. So... Uh, so I think it will be a transfer market so difficult for top clubs, but they will go for two players. So we have to expect a fantastic September, I think, more than August. All right. So also look forward to. Do you think it's sort of causing Manchester United problems? The fact that this the Sancho deal is dragging on, that other targets and other deals they have to make are going to have to be postponed. Do you think that might make it difficult for Manchester United going into, as you said, September and the, the sort of the last couple of months of the transfer window? I think no. I think no. I'm convinced they are working also to have backup options ready. It's normal they are not advancing because also the backup options know they are working for Sancho. But at the same time, they, they will be ready. I think they will be ready also to have backup options as Sancho deal. But also, in, as I told you, for a centre-back, they will go for, for other players. So they will be ready. We have to, be, to wait a bit. It's normal. I think also for other clubs. You see the same is for Chelsea with Cagliavers. The same is in La Liga. The same is in Italian football. So this is a more moment where you have to wait um, but after as I told you one week two weeks we will have more news also on other targets and not just on such. We've seen in recent times that you've been doing more and more and more media work. Is, have you got any plans in the future that we should know about? No, I have to be honest I never had a plan in, in my future about my work so I never said I want to work for this paper or, or for this TV. Uh, I was never expecting this I have to be honest, I was thinking when I was younger, I said, okay, and I will work for, for Italian transfer market, not for worldwide transfer market. So it's something new for me, but I don't have any plans. I want to see what will, what will happen. And at the moment, I am just happy. I want to find news and to share with the people. I don't want just to think on my work, on my next, next, next chapter. 
okay, it's important where I work because I also, I also need to, to plan my future. But in this moment, I am just trying to, to be at the best level possible. And that's my mentality. I don't want to plan anything because it's like the transfer market. You can say today the, done, the deal is done and tomorrow, okay, it's broken. So I think it's better to say day by day. That's my mentality. That, that must be quite nerve-wracking for you, though, Fabrizio, when you, you know a deal's sort of ready to be done, waiting to, for it to get over the line, and always that worry. Is that worry that something could go wrong or it can change because deals can change? Is that something that, that sort of... I was going to say keeps you awake at night, but you're already awake. But is that something, <laughs> is that something you worry about? Yes, yeah, no, no, no. I never worry. If you're worried, you're dead. So I never worry. I try to say... To, I have to be honest. If you are honest with the people and with your news and with the agent and with the directors, you don't have any problem. And I hope always that people can understand that transfer market is crazy. It's really crazy because I've seen things that are really, really crazy with players, with agreements. I remember about Jorginho, for example. He's a good example of, the, of this kind of mentality in the transfer market because Napoli found a total agreement, but really a total agreement with Manchester City with, for Jorginho like two years ago, if I remember well, or three or two years ago, the agreement was really total. They scheduled medicals. It was ready. The deal was absolutely done. And then um, they had problems because they were speaking Napoli with Chelsea for Mauricio Sarri to get him free from Napoli contract. And Chelsea told to Napoli, okay, we want Sarri, but we want also Jorginho. So we sign both or we go on another manager. And Napoli was needing money and they said, okay, we give you Jorginho and Sarri. And Manchester City were really furious for because of this, because they had Jorginho, Guardiola wanted Jorginho, and they lose, lost the player. So this is crazy in transfer market, because really it was a done deal. It was an here we go, <laughs> Jorginho to Manchester City, and they had problems. And still today, they are having problems between the two clubs, because Manchester City and Napoli are having problems. They are not doing any deal together, and now Manchester City wants Koulibaly from Napoli, but they don't find an agreement also because of the problem. So you understand the transfer market is really, really crazy. Anything can happen. I just want to be honest with the people. I tell you what I know and what is happening, but I can't know what will happen tomorrow because I don't work for any club. So also when they ask me from Manchester United, they tell me, oh, do you think in two weeks we will sign Sancho? I don't know. I want to be the Manchester United director, put money and get Sancho. So you're happy, but I'm not. I can just tell you what is happening now. I know, yeah. I think that's why a lot of people appreciate what you do because you do sort of, you know, deal with the, the facts that you know. Um, yes. you, you keep saying it's a crazy time with transfers and, and how crazy it can be. How crazy has it been with the pandemic as well and the, the fact that that's happened? Has that changed a lot of transfers, deals that were going to happen and maybe just made it even more crazy? Yes, yes, I think yes. Um, I told you before about, about Lautaro Martinez because I think it's, it's the perfect example. I think without the, the, the virus, Lautaro Martinez today was already a player of Barcelona. It was an agreed deal. It was a ready deal between Barcelona and Inter. And then they had the virus and now they need, need to sell players. As I told you, Dembélé, as I told you, Coutinho, they need to sell players now. And, and then something different because the virus changed the transfer market for the top clubs in particular because for small clubs or middle table clubs it's normal you have to find players for 10 for 12 for 20 million euro and nothing changed but now for the top clubs you have many and many problems you have many problems because it's difficult in a summer like this to spend 100 million euro on just one player after you lost money because of the stadium because of the tickets because of everything, of the, the salary of the players who were not playing. So it's difficult in this summer to find an agreement for a top player. So that's why I told you, I think it will be even crazy, more even crazy than, than always, because it, was, it is always crazy in the transfer market, but this summer will be something unbelievable, yes. Um, just a couple of United questions to round up. Um, yes. Just when it comes to the, the transfers and the, the structure at United, has it changed over recent years? Because we've heard in the past where you've had Ed Woodward involved with deals, then it's been Matt George. Have they sort of changed? Have United changed the way they approach deals now and they they do deals, or is it, has it been the same since since sort of Ed Woodward took over? Yes, 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 yes. I think yes. It's, it's always said who is who is working on the deals, and they changed also their mentality. I think in in the last years because uh, they go now for. And I think it's, it's a good way to find top players. They don't want just to, to sign players to get numbers and, and something like this. They want top players, like one or two targets to the transfer market. And Ed is with this mentality. Okay, we have to get one, to, like Liverpool did. You remember with Salah, with Alisson and then Van Dijk, one top player in a year, and then they found the top team. That's the mentality of Manchester United, I think. They want to get 
and to play and any top player every every summer and they did it with Bruno they did it with Maguire they did it with Juan Bissak who was a great player and there were time with, with Sancho so this will be the mentality always with Ed because Ed is the, is the mind of Manchester United he is working on the deals so uh, this is his mentality on the transfer market we have to get top players we have to to get a top team and every summer we have to get a top player so I think this will be the way and it's normal they also have top players growing in the club because I think uh, I don't know how you feel this but also from Italy from from other countries I see when, the, when we speak about Manchester United we see players like Rashford to do an example who can be really a top top player in two three years he can be a top top level player so the same for Anthony Martial so you have the right way, I think. And Ed is this kind of mentality. We have to sign top players. No more time for middle players. Okay, we have to get numbers. No more. We have to go with our players and with top players. That's the mentality. I know we've been speaking a lot about, obviously, United's potential buyers, but could you see United actually selling quite a lot of players this summer as well? I think, yes. Someone must, must go. And I think also young players who are not playing, for example, Diogo Dalot needs to, needs to play. And yes, it, won't, it will not be easy to, sp- to sell players. Also, for example, Lingard will leave the club, I think. Um, you have to, to change something with this kind of players and you have to sell on loan some players also uh, because they, they need to play. Uh, I was really surprised with the, the Nemanja Matic situation because it was, I was speaking in January with his agents and it was seeming like, okay, we're going to Italy, we're going to another club, we're going to change. And Manchester United changed their mind on the player, also because of Ole, they decided to, to keep him. And yes, as I told you, I, I expect something can change also for, for selling players, but at the moment, nothing advanced. I think, I think we have to, to wait a bit also for Lingard and also for, for Diogo, for example. Just finally on that, Fabrizio, do United need to sell players to buy anyone? Is that is that a case of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to get players off the wage bill? Or is it a case of he just has his targets regardless of whether we sell anyone or not? I think it's not need. I think it's help. I, it will help to, to sell players. It's normal because Manchester United has a good situation in this moment by economical way. So uh, it's normal after the virus. It's not easy situation for every top club. But between the top clubs, Manchester United has a good situation now. So it would help to sell players. But it's not easy, as we said, in this summer to, to sell players. You have to say, for example, Barcelona, I think is the main example. Also, you went to here in Italy yesterday. They sold Matuidi, who is a good player, a good midfielder, for free to Inter Miami in MLS. For free is, is a big deal. We were expecting like 10 million euro, 50 million euro, and they get the player for free. So it's a difficult summer for these kind of clubs. Uh, and the same as I told you for Barcelona, they are desperate to sell Felipe Coutinho and the same to, to find an agreement for, for Dembele with some other clubs. But Dembele is a particular situation because the player refused to go out of, on loan. So I think it will be so difficult also to sell players in the summer because I'm looking at it in Italy and... It's really, really complicated. For example, Inter was really happy. They sold Dicardi to Paris Saint-Germain because they say, OK, in the summer, you will see that Dicardi will be one of the most important players in, in, in the world summer because we were saying, OK, 50 million euro for Dicardi is not too much. He's a good striker. And they said it will be so difficult to sell players. And I think it's the same in the Premier League now. Yes. Fabrizio, it's been, it's been great talking to you and we'll be watching you waiting for those three magic <laughs> words. Here we go. I hope so. <laughs> so that was Fabrizio Romano. Some good stuff there, wasn't it? What a man. Yeah, what a man. Great what man. a guy. <laughs> We're just waiting for those three magic words. Now, here we go. That's what we want to hear. Um, this has been the Tier 1 Transfer Podcast. That's been Ronaldo Brown. I've been Jay. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.